Take a moment to ask yourself this question. Have I ever done anything that I did not want to do? Your answer, if it is yes, reflects a very common belief. In the next 25 minutes, we will explore the reasons why we believe what we believe. In part one, we will discover the reality that we have always been our own authority. In part two, we will investigate human behavior and the important role awareness plays in our lives. In part three, we will review the understanding necessary to begin improving our self-esteem. This video presented by the Barksdale Foundation is the first in a series on building self-esteem. Since 1958, this nonprofit foundation has been a pioneer and a leader in establishing the importance of self-esteem and stress control. The founder, L.S. Barksdale, was a university graduate with a degree in mechanical engineering. Although he was a successful and wealthy entrepreneur and businessman, he felt unhappy, unfulfilled, and suffered from ulcers and migraines. These symptoms started him on the search for the reasons why he felt the way he did in spite of his money and accomplishments. This spurred his interest in human behavior. He began developing a careful process for defining and building self-esteem based on what he called observable realities of how and why he and others acted the way they did. Barksdale found that low self-esteem, that is, self-rejection, was the root cause of almost all personal and social problems. Emotions such as anxiety, loneliness, resentment, jealousy, guilt, and anger are symptoms of low self-esteem, which can lead to unhappiness, divorce, discrimination, alcoholism, drug use, spouse and child abuse, violence, and even suicide. Self-rejection not only costs lives, it also costs money. Businesses lose billions of dollars each year because of absenteeism, lowered quantity and quality of work, and again, drug and alcohol abuse. Medical research has proven that the stress generated by destructive emotions can cause physical symptoms such as headaches, ulcers, eating disorders, and even heart failures. Self-rejection robs us of the ability to take conscious charge of our own lives. Now, the Barksdale programs are dramatically successful because they deal with root causes, not merely symptoms of low self-esteem. True self-esteem is not egotism. Self-esteem is not a sense of superiority. Self-esteem does not come from having great intelligence or talent or wealth. Self-esteem is an emotion, how warm and loving we feel toward ourselves. And sound self-esteem enables us to genuinely love and accept ourselves and others. As your self-esteem improves, you will find that you will enjoy your friends and family more. And when alone, you will appreciate your own company. With sound self-esteem, you will be more productive oh. and creative at work and less susceptible to the pressures that used to get you down. So how do we go about building self-esteem? Well, remember that question have I ever done anything that I did not want to do? Most people say yes and can list a number of examples. Let's take just one example and work out the logic with the following exercise. Say that the office where you work was closing and you were being transferred to another branch office across the country. Wouldn't your answer be, I didn't want to do that? Keep your situation in mind as you ask yourself the following questions. Well, why did you go? Oh, you didn't want to lose your seniority and pension, and you like your line of work. How would you have felt if you had not gone? 
Well, you were anxious and frustrated. You would have been worried about your income and how you were going to pay your bills. What price would you have had to pay for not going? That's right. You would have lost your seniority and pension. You'd have to look for a new job. You'd have to interview all over again and learn new job skills. You might even have to take a pay cut. Were you willing to pay this price? Well, of course not. Didn't you do what you would rather do under the circumstances? You may not have liked it, but wasn't it what you most wanted to do, considering the alternatives and the total price and benefits involved? Let's take it a step further. Is there anything within your capabilities that you cannot do? No. Isn't it the price demanded that makes you feel you had no other alternative? Yes, it is. Now, based on the previous questions and your answers, isn't the following a true statement of human behavior? I am my own authority. I am free to do anything I myself see fit. There is nothing within your capabilities you cannot do. You cannot, however, avoid paying the price demanded for anything you do. Again, let's consider the observable reality that we are our own authority. Not our parents, not our spouses or boyfriends or girlfriends. Not teachers, employers, police, or even the government. When we realize that we have always been our own authority and have always been responsible for the consequences of everything we do or even refuse to do, then we see that we have the power to accomplish our aspirations. We have the power to take on new endeavors. Of course, that also means that we have the freedom to make mistakes or show weakness. So you see, we are responsible for ourselves because we benefit or suffer from the decisions we make. Just realize that good and bad, fair and unfair, and right and wrong are just intellectual concepts. There are only wise and unwise actions. So before you make a serious decision, ask yourself the following questions. Is this action wise? Will it contribute to my basic needs? Will I hurt myself or others? What is the total price involved? Am I willing to pay that price? Until you consciously accept the reality that you are your own authority, you cannot experience sound self-esteem. And now, in part two, we will use this diagram to illustrate how we actually function and the role awareness plays in our lives. It is important to follow the logic of this particular presentation with an open and receptive mind, for these life-changing concepts are the basis of this entire self-esteem program. It is necessary that you fully understand this topic, for otherwise you will be unable to accept yourself totally and unconditionally, the essential requirement for achieving sound self-esteem. In order to clearly understand the crucial role our awareness plays in our lives, it is necessary to put your present values, concepts, beliefs, and assumptions on the shelf and not concern yourself with any implications until after all discussion. This material is not theory or speculation, but is based on observable realities. It is either true or not true. And if it is true, it is true whether or not it agrees with your current belief system. To understand how you function, it is first necessary for you to have a realistic concept of who you are. Are you your body? No, you are not your body. For you can lose both arms and legs, as well as many other parts, without being diminished as an individual. You are still you as much as you ever were. 
Your body is simply the vehicle or instrument through which you function in this material phase of your existence. Are you your mind? No, your mind is simply the activity of your brain or human computer and your associated nervous system. If you were your mind, you would cease to be any time you fell into a coma or dreamless sleep. Now, if you are not your mind or body, what then are you? Suppose the doctor pronounced you dead. Your body is still around. However, it is now silent, cold, and unmoving. It is apparent that a significant change has taken place. Something has definitely left. Nothing, however, has been seen to leave, right? What then is it that has left? Must it not be the non-physical being or essence that inhabited and animated your mind and body? Must it not be the you that thinks, feels, makes decisions, and acts through your mind and body? For what else could you possibly be? Now, what is your awareness? Your awareness, by definition, is how clearly you see and understand both consciously and non-consciously, everything that affects your life. Now, since the term awareness is a term of utmost importance in this program, it is of vital importance to fix its definition clearly in your mind and memory, word for word. Please, listen carefully and sense the significance of every word as I repeat its definition. Your awareness is how clearly you see and understand, both consciously and non-consciously, everything that affects your life. Now, what is the source of your awareness? Your awareness is the automatic product of three factors. Your heredity, your intuition or inner knowing, and your total life experience including the full impact of your lifelong environment. What is heredity? Heredity is everything you brought into the world with you. What is inner knowing? Your inner knowing is another term for your intuitional insights. Your inner knowing is the information you perceive directly without benefit of intellectualizing or rationalization. Your inner knowing is your direct contact with the inner wisdom ever waiting at the threshold of your consciousness. Now, while your awareness is continually changing, owing to continual input from your inner knowing and total life experience, at the instant of any decision, your awareness is as fixed or frozen as a block of ice, for all input has ceased during that point in time. At any given instant, your awareness simply is what it is, the automatic product of your heredity, inner knowing, and total life experience, none of which factors you can change at any given time. Your prevailing awareness is your awareness at any given point in time. Now, are you your awareness? No. Your awareness is a function of your mind. It is how clearly you see and understand. How could you be how clearly you see and understand? You are that which sees and understands. You are that non-physical being which thinks, makes decisions, and acts based on your awareness. In other words, you are not your awareness, but your awareness determines your values. Now, what do we mean by values? Your values are anything of significant worth or importance to you. For example, they can be something tangible, such as a new home or car, or something abstract, such as beauty, honesty, justice, or whatever. Your values are sound or distorted depending on the degree that your awareness is in alignment with reality with what actually is. It is your values that generate your desires.
For example, a value on a swimming pool generates a desire to own one. Our desires become needs when they are so strong that we do not feel good until they are satisfied. Now at any given time, you may have a number of competing needs. Your most intense competing need is your dominant need. How can you tell it is your dominant need? Because it is the need on which you act. Your dominant need is the one that motivates you. Now, what is the function of tension? The tension generated by your dominant need is simply your signal to act. Why? Because tension makes you uncomfortable, and your basic need is to feel good mentally, physically, and emotionally. To relieve this tension, it is necessary to make a decision to act in order to satisfy your dominant need. Now, what determines how you decide to satisfy your dominant need? Your prevailing awareness. Why? Because it is how clearly you see and understand everything that affects your life that indicates how you can best satisfy your dominant need and rid yourself of tension. To summarize, to release the tension generated by your dominant need, you make your decision and take action based on the data supplied by your prevailing awareness. Now in view of what you have just learned, what is a valid definition of actions? Your actions are the means you select based on your prevailing awareness to satisfy your dominant or motivating needs. This is all your actions are, merely the means you choose to satisfy your dominant or motivating needs. Now, every action has consequences. The consequences of your actions make you inescapably responsible for everything you do or neglect to do. Why? Because by definition, responsibility means you are answerable or accountable for your actions. Can you ever escape responsibility for your actions or behavior? No, definitely not. Why? Because you inevitably benefit or suffer according to the consequences of everything you think, say, do, and feel. Contrary to general opinion, you cannot be irresponsible. There is no such thing as a cop-out. For there is no way you can possibly avoid the consequences of your actions, be they good, bad, or indifferent. You may be unreliable, but it is impossible to be irresponsible. Even if you get another person to make your decisions, you are still responsible, for you are the one stuck with the consequences of your actions. Now, as the diagram shows, your total life experience is changed by the consequences of your actions. Your new life experience then feeds into your prevailing awareness and changes it. This completes a need cycle and you are ready to handle your next dominant need. You now have a new prevailing awareness and might act differently in a similar situation in the future. Now that you understand how we function, let's look at some significant conclusions we can draw from the role awareness plays in our life. It is an observable reality that every human action is a response to a personal need. It is an observable reality that man's basic need is to feel good mentally, physically, and emotionally. By feel good, we mean an overall satisfying sense of inner peace and well-being. It is our fundamental need to feel good that is behind the basic law of human behavior. Now, what is the basic law of human behavior? We can only do what we would rather do than not do. Why is this a law of human behavior? 
because investigation of how and why we act as we do shows conclusively that there is no other reason possible for doing anything. Like the law of gravity, it is unchangeable and always in operation. Now, what determines what we do or don't do? Our prevailing awareness. Why? Because it is our awareness, that is, how clearly we see and understand everything that affects our life, that dictates what we would rather do than not do. Does the fact that your awareness determines everything you think, say, do, and feel mean you do not possess free will? No, definitely not. Free will, by definition, means you can do anything you want or choose. The reality is that there is absolutely nothing within your capabilities that you cannot do if you choose. The price demanded for a given action may cause you to think you cannot do a certain thing, but the reality is that you can. What then is the crucial role our awareness plays in our life? Our awareness determines our every action and reaction, everything we think, say, do, and feel. Are we ever to blame for what we do? Definitely not. Why not? Well, since our awareness determines everything we do, any fault in what we do lies not in us, but in our faulty awareness, which is not us and for which we are never to blame. For our awareness is the automatic product of three factors, our heredity, our inner knowing, and our total life experience, none of which we can change on demand. It is now apparent that responsibility is an inescapable reality and that blame is a tragic lie, for there is no rational justification whatever for blame. And since we are never to blame, there is no valid justification for guilt. Blame and guilt are roadblocks that keep us from experiencing genuine love of self and others. These roadblocks result in fault-finding, criticism, and condemnation, causing us to resist ourselves and others. It follows, therefore, that sound self-esteem is genuine love of self, based on total, unconditional acceptance of ourselves, regardless of our mistakes or defeats. Our lack of self-acceptance is the automatic product of the false and destructive concepts of human behavior, laid on us practically from the time we wet our first diaper. If we are to accept ourselves totally and unconditionally, we must replace these false and destructive concepts with the observable realities of human behavior. We will examine these concepts in the next video in this series. And may the blessings of sound self-esteem be yours all the days of your life.